Hi fellows, and in this video we'll be looking at the discs. Uh, we'll be checking them out and see if they are still in a good condition. We will then also uh, verify them that they have the correct thickness and that they have the proper runout. Uh, and then uh, we will put the new disc on if necessary. The easiest way to do this is to remove uh, the wheel from the car and have the car on a stand or on a jack obviously and then the next thing we'll do is to remove the clamp now removing the clamp is easy there are two bolts and those you just need to undo and then you can remove the clamp i always remove the clamp because it makes life a bit easier now you may run into a bit of a problem if you're trying to remove the clamp especially if the disc is kind of worn out because it has a rim often on the edges and the brake pads may be stuck behind it so you have to push back the brake pads a bit huh? and you can do this with a key or a heavy screwdriver uh, that always works uh, and then basically when you have undone the bolts and I already cheated a bit but that's easy uh, make sure that the caliper doesn't fall, lift them out and place them on, on a support area so we don't really are going to damage the um, stainless steel flexible hose pipe. Now you can have really a close look on the brake uh, or disc itself and you should be looking for abnormal wear or tear uh, places. So you should be able to, to rotate it and just look at it look on both sides look for deep scratches or grooves in it if you have those then you need to replace them and that's basically it obviously you need to check for cracks as well but that's basically the normal checkout now the next thing is the verification the first thing to verify is the thickness of the disc now the disc should be around 26 millimeters uh, if they are brand new but you're allowed to have wear and tear on it of about 1.1 millimeter so basically if the disc is thinner than 24.9 millimeters then you should really replace it that's the minimum service thickness that the disc should have you can measure this with a, a caliper but be aware that the disc may have a rim and you shouldn't be measuring on the rim you should be measuring on the disc and I'm just gonna measure it and see what I have so mine are about just on the edge of 25 millimeters so i think they are really up to a replacement you can still drive them they are still within spec the next step is to check the runout on the disc and the runout of the disc means the flatness the disc should not be distorted in any direction or way and that's what you need to do uh, with a special tool and therefore you need a dial like this it's actually a pin that pushes on the disc and then you can see the reading on the dial uh, what the difference is on the surface uh, and i'll show you that in a minute uh, you may have to build your own little bracket i have mounted the dial on a little bracket and it doesn't have to be very solid and i bolted it down actually on the bottom part where normally the caliber is bolted onto i actually put a, a socket in between because the bolt uh, isn't threaded all the way to the end so uh, that's just to have that offset you can buy even magnetic systems for that but i just built my own bracket uh, make sure that the pin of the dial is actually touching the uh, surface of the disc and that it's sufficiently depressed there's plenty of dials available on the market this runs about 30 euros not that expensive i would say but make sure whenever you fix the dial uh, that it's fixed on the same piece of metal where the disc is on so don't put it on a stand on the ground or something like this because you will always have variations uh, so let's have a closer look on on the dial and how we're going to measure the run out the dial is now attached to the wheel and now we need to zero rise uh, basically the dial and we'll turn that and on yours it may be a bit different just gonna, there we go so now we have it zero rise every little marker on the the dial is 0 0.1 millimeter and the disc is allowed to have new 0 0.03 millimeters so that means three uh, markings a disc which has been in use uh, has a maximum runout allowance of 0 0.1 millimeter so 0 0.1 millimeter would mean basically 10 marks so from 0 to 10 
So we should not have any marking in that area because then the disc has to be replaced. And as you can see, we have little, so here we have a little bit of an offset, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, but overall the maximum I'm seeing there is point, I will keep going. I've seen the maximum 0 0.04. Now this is a groove, so don't worry about this one. So now we keep going. Now it's going a bit to the other side. That's like 0 0.1. Oh, a groove again. We keep rotating the disc until we reach the end. And we kind of done full circle now. So what we've seen on, on this disc is that the maximum was um, the fourth marker on this one and one and a half marked on that one. So that makes it 0 0.056 as the maximum uh, deviation that we have had on this disc. Um, so that's good because we are allowed to have uh, 0 0.1, which would have mean, you know, from zero to 10 or from five to five there. So we are good. Um, so if you fit the new disc, you have to do exactly the same thing. All right, we've checked the, uh, the thickness, we checked the runout on the disc, we did a surface inspection and we decided that the disc will be replaced. Replacing the disc is easy. Uh, you have a central uh, nut here, which you can undo with key number seven, and then you can actually replace the disc. Now, I already removed it before, uh, but be aware that this uh, bolt here can be a bit tough to remove and you actually may drill it out. And that's what I had to do on this one. Now drilling it out is not that hard. Uh, start with a small uh, bit first in the middle. Yeah. And then get a bit of a bigger bit at the end. So you can actually cut off the edges of the nut. Um, and then, you know, you can actually slide the disc over it. So at the end, you know, you go with a bigger, you go with a bigger bit and then actually you, you turn away the whole part. And in fact, that's what I've done, as you can see here, and you can see it on the top. I had to do it on this disc. Take off the disc and are you all set? So now we are ready to mount the new disc. Before you put the new disc on, you may want to put some copper grease on the hub. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because I need to take the disc back off again afterwards, but when I finally will mount it, I'll put some copper grease uh, on this area. That looks quite nice. But even a new disc can have a runout, so the next thing we'll do is to verify the runout on the new disc. Uh, we reconnected the dial and we zeroized it and now we're going to check the runout on a new disc. And I think that's well within tolerance because it's supposed to be no more than 0 0.03. You might want to wonder why we check the runout on new disc. Well, new discs, we may order them through the mail postal office, whatever, uh, and they get shipped to us and they may be damaged in the shipment, but it can also have a construction fault. It could be any kind of uh, any kind of issue. That's why it's always good to double check it. Now note as well that the runout check will give you another indication. If you have a new disc and it has a runout and your old disc also had a runout and you're putting your second new disc up and your third and your fourth and they all seem to have a runout, that may be an indication that you're bearing on the wheel hub is gone. So a bad bearing on the wheel hub may cause a run out. So make sure that your bearings are good. So if all four new discs mounted on the same hub show a run out, then suspect that you have a problem with your bearing on the central wheel hub. So we all done and all what's left now is to put back the brake caliber. Uh, but remember, uh, put new brake pads up if you put no disc. But I'll have another video on how to replace the brake pads. Putting the caliper back on is easy. Make sure that the brake pads are wide enough open, but I have another video on the brake pads. Uh, place it over the disc, insert the bolt, second bolt, and don't forget 
to torque them down to the right torque levels. Thank you for viewing.